Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, I really appreciate you so very much. So let's get started. So for my first project, it's actually a really long wooden tray that I've had for quite some time and I use it a lot um, because it's a perfect tray to sit either on a coffee table or my dining room table. And then you can do like little vignettes on it. Um, but I wanted to kind of spice it up a little bit. And this is the Roy Cycle paper called Queen B. So I measured out what part I wanted on the inside of that little tray. Now on this particular paper, there's some really pretty flowers which I think are perfect, but for this particular piece, I wanted it to be as neutral as could be, and then that way I can, you know, use it during all different seasons. And this paper is awesome. I love Roy Cycle um, decoupage paper, and I'm putting it down with Pent Art decoupage varnish and glue. So I actually end up cutting off on one end the part that I don't need. But on the bottom part, I go on and get that paper all put on. And then the next day, then I will use like um, a little X-Acto knife to cut off the part on the bottom. And I saw a video a while back and it was where on the Roy Sacco channel, they took bits and pieces of different decoupage paper and they just kind of put them all together and made another sheet of paper. It was really cool. And so um, I save all my little scraps because I've already done one of those papers like that. Um, and, but that's, it's a Christmas paper. So I just work my way down and then I've got like a little piece of cellophane wrap that I just push down, but I don't get wrinkles in it. So it does really well. Now on the side of the tray, I'm gonna be putting some different molds and I use Dawes Air Dry Clay. And the first mold that I'm gonna be using are the little swirly pieces at the end on the IOD Olive Crest Mold. So if you've not used mold, uh, I'm sorry, if you've not used clay before, um, on the IOD molds, there's a the little micro rim. So it makes it really easy to just put that clay in and push it down. And then your thumb just naturally pushes it off to that little rim. But I like to always go back with an old gift card or credit card and just make it smooth on the back. And then I just kind of like to work my finger around um, to make sure that I have gotten it within that frame of the mold. And then I do two. Now, what I really like about IOD molds is that so many times they have those pieces that fit real well together. You know, one will be to the right side and one will be to the left. And so it's awesome how you can, you know, just put two little molds side by side and they just work so well. Now, I'm going to be using another mold and this one is called the IOD Laura mold because I want the little crown in it because within this paper, there is a little picture of a crown. So once it sets up for just a minute and I've got all ready and I'm going to get ready to glue it, they just roll out really easy um, because I put cornstarch in my molds and then that way they just come out real easy. Now on that little crown, the little part came off at the top, but I was able to glue it on. Now I'm going to have that crown in the middle. So I just measured it off so that it would be symmetrical on both sides and just made like a little pencil mark so that I could then go back and erase it later. And then I put on this, just a really small lip of this tray. I put those two pieces from the olive crest and then the crown um, from the IOD mold laurel. What I then do is I let that dry overnight because I wanna go back on the other side of the tray and do the same thing. And I don't have a lot of space to um, put these molds on. So I've already sort of kind of played with it a little bit just to make sure that the pieces will fit on there really well. And I love the way that it turned out. And I'm actually already using this tray, even at Easter. Um, once it sets up for just a little bit, then I go on and paint mine. And I've been using Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. 
and I use a very, very soft bristle brush and just kind of dab the paint on because I don't want to mess up any of the details. But if you're comfortable painting it before it dries, then it keeps you from having a lot of cracks. Now, both the sides are finished and painted. And now what I'm doing is I'm using Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain in the color natural because I don't want it to be so stark. So I just brush that on and then I will go back with a baby wipe and just wipe it down because I want those details or that um, voodoo gel stain kind of stick inside of the details. And then I want a little bit on the edges because I want it to look sort of old and crusty. Then what I do is I actually go back over the decoupage paper and do the same thing. Now, because I want it to all blend really well. But at this point, the paper has been dry for about a day. And so once I put this Voodoo Gel Stain on it, I don't have to worry about it pulling up any paper that's not dry all the way. And this stain is just enough to give it just a little bit of an extra finish. And then I go all the way around on the inside. Now, one of the things that I don't share is that I use the IOD, IOD Vintage Texture Stamp, and I just use the little crackle finish, and I do just a little bit here and a little bit there just to make it look a little old and weathered. And this is how I've got it styled. And actually, this little picture right here, um, when I was small, this man, he lived right beside me, and his name was Mr. Hatchet, and he was my best friend, and oh, I just thought the world of him, and I'm so thankful that I have that picture of him. So for right now, it's just a pretty tray that's sitting on the table, and I'll use it many other times as well. Now, my second project is just this little planter that I thrifted, and all of my pieces today are thrifted. I am trying to work my way through my stash, and I'm doing pretty good. I'm not going to be buying a lot. I, I, I try to keep from going to the thrift shop now because I want to finish up what I've got um, in my stash. So this little planter, um, it had a, um, you know, a design on it and it took a couple coats to cover it up and I used Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream on this. Now those little metal legs, I could have kept them metal, but it was going to be so much trouble to have to tape them off and everything. And so I just decided I'd just go ahead and paint them. Now, once that paint dried, then I sprayed it with Rust-Oleum Clear Finish and let that dry really well. And then I pulled out the transfer from the IOD Christmas um, Candy Cane Cottage transfer set. And it is so, so pretty. And I know it has a few little red berries in it, but the colors in this transfer are just gorgeous. And I was so excited when it came out because this is a transfer that you can use all year long. And then you just take that plastic and rub it back over it and it's called burnishing it. And now on the inside, I wanted to keep the inside painted black, um, but it was kind of scratched a little bit. So I did go back and paint, just paint it all on the inside as well as I painted it on the bottom as well. But I'm gonna mimic what it came with in the first place. And this is just some rub and buff because I'm getting kind of low on my gold gilding wax. So I decided to pull this old rub and buff out and use that. And I put that on the legs and I rub it all the way around the edges. And then I put it back on those little metal pieces that's got the little loops. And then is it that beautiful? And it's just styled with some little washcloths and a candle and a little bath bomb and some matches. And this would be beautiful in like a guest bathroom. Um, if you've got visitors coming, you could have all of those sweet little things ready for them. So if you're enjoying the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you're not already part of our family. Now, I love this little piece. This is something I've actually had for quite some time. And I really liked it the way that it was. And it was some of that folk primitive art on the little drawers, but I didn't want to leave it like that. So I actually painted it all black just to cover up those details. And then I went back with Rust-Oleum Serenity Blue. 
Now, this particular transfer is by Redesign with Prima, and it's called Blush Bouquet. And I just cut out the little pieces, and I didn't really waste it because I'll save those little extra pieces and use later. But I wanted both of the doors to have that same design. Now, I've, we, I didn't actually paint the whole inside of this little cabinet in the beginning, but I decided later on that I would go back because even though you're not going to see the underside of that little bottom shelf, I can't stand it to not be finished off. So I did go back and paint that. So after I painted it and I put clear sealer on it, then I'm putting these transfers just on the door. And then it got really tricky, and I also put some on the back side of those little shelves. And I love it. I just think it is so, so pretty. I love these colors together. Now, it was a bear to try to get those transfers on the back side of those little shelves. But I was happy with the way it turned out. And it's going to be really hard to give this up, but I do love it a lot. Now, this next piece is so, so simple. This is actually one of those little stools that you can get at Hobby Lobby. And I've had it for quite some time and it was already painted white. And this transfer came from the Dollar Tree. Can you believe it? And their transfers, for the most part, are really, really good. So I just cut out this little ivy wreath and I put that on the middle. And then I found some more little pieces that matched up the leaves in that little wreath. And then on all four sides, I put just a little bit of a transfer just to kind of add that extra touch to it. So it's painted with Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint and clear coated. And then after I get the transfers on, then I go back and clear coat it again to make sure it's sealed. But the transfers on the little side, it's just a little bit of extra detail. But before I show you the finished product, I want to show you what I decided to put on top. Now, this little plant came from Ikea, and it just comes in those little black pots because I'm not good at growing flowers on the inside of the house, so Ikea grows all my flowers for me. And so, I wanted to put something on the top of this little stool, and so I pulled this one out of my stash, and then this is the IOD trimmings mold, and what I'm doing is I'm just putting that one particular piece up at the top of that little pot and it takes a couple pieces to put it on and I'm using the tight bond thick and quick and I put it on with that little silicone stick because oh I, I cannot stand to get that glue on my fingers it just drives me crazy and then this particular mold comes from the IOD Florida de lis mold because I really like Florida de lis and so I'm gonna put that little teeny mold right on the front of that pot and now let it set up. Um, I actually take, need two different pieces of that trim to go all the way around the top, but because it's rounded and I didn't want to mess it up, then I made sure that, that other side had set up for a while. And then um, I just used the Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream and I just went on and painted the whole piece. I didn't even really put antiquing wax on this at all. I was happy with just leaving it just like that. And I just think it turned out so pretty. So it turned a little $5 Ikea plant into just such a beautiful little piece that anybody would be proud to have in their house. And because it's just a little faux plant, well, I can't kill it. So um, my family knows that and they're okay with it. And I like that Ikea has these cheap little plants because that way you can kind of sit them around in different vignettes. And here are the two pieces together. But isn't that just so sweet? So if you are somebody that can grow plants without killing them, this is a perfect little riser to put it on. Or, you know, even if you wanted to make sure you put a lot of sealer on it, this little, little stool could be something that you can sit beside the sink and put your soap on or put your lotion on. But it's just a pretty little stool that I bought at Hobby Lobby. And of course, it was half off when I bought it because I never pay full price. Now, I'm so excited about this piece. Look at this fabric. So I'm going to leave a coupon code in the description box below from burlapfabric.com. And that coupon code is going to give you, listen, ready, $5 off 
of a $5 purchase. You can't get better than that. And so they contacted me and they sent me some different things that I really liked. And they are giving y'all a coupon code for that $5 off of a $5 purchase. Now, this particular piece is um, a placemat and it comes with 12 different placemats. And when I saw that fabric, oh my gosh, I just thought, I just thought of a million things I could use besides using it as a placemat. I love it. And this transfer is by Redesign with Prima and it's called Bot Botanical Snippets. And it's real easy to put that transfer on. And I just use the little transfer tool. I don't have to seal it ahead of time. But I still use that plastic piece to burnish it. Now, I've already kind of just played with this fabric just a little bit. And I'm just using my fingers to kind of push down the edges and turn it have, so it won't have a raw edge to it. And then I'm just using some fabric glue to like glue those little raw edges down. Now, these placemats are huge. And they come in a pack of 12. And so I can't wait to show you the other things I'm going to be doing with it later. Um, but I love this fabric. So if you notice in the background, there's like a little wall um, basket where you can you put pockets of flowers in it. So I'm going to be putting this on the front of this basket. Now, previously, I had something on it for the fall. And I saved it. And I took that off. And I'm going to be putting this on for the spring. And this is that big old crocodile, and it will cut through fabric. And I'm going to be cutting four um, little holes, one on each corner. And this is after the glue has set up really well. Now, I don't want to glue it on at all because I want to might change it later. So this is some old rusty wire that I ordered off of Etsy. And I'm just poking that through that hole and taking both pieces on the inside of that little basket and just twisting it on so it's just a little fabric hanger right inside that basket and i love this and then i just took some greenery that i had and this is just a big tassel that i have and look at that isn't that beautiful i love the stripe in this fabric but this is currently sitting on my fireplace um because i love lavender and i love that greenery and I just think it's such a pretty um, floral piece to transition us into the spring. So friends, we are at the end of the video already. Um, I want to thank you for watching. I hope that today I have inspired you as you begin to go through the things that you've got in your stash, any sort of thrift flips that you're wanting to do. I hope I've given you some good ideas today as you've watch me th do these five projects. It was a lot of fun, and I've been so excited about this video. But I love all the pieces today. It is going to be really hard to tell you which one is my favorite, because I love all of them. And even this little piece with the florals from Candy Cane Cottage, this can go in the spring, and I could even put it out at Christmas, because it does have the red berries in it, and use that at Christmas time. So it's perfect, and I love it. And then that little cabinet back at the back, I'm thinking my granddaughter, when she sees it, she's probably going to want to steal it. So um, she loves little things that you can put stuff in. So in the comments below today, make sure and tell me what was your favorite piece. And also make sure to check out that coupon code for burlapfabric.com for $5 off of a $5 purchase. So friends, if you enjoyed the video, to, video today, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate all of your support and I will see you in my next video. Have a great week.